Let's have a dream which isn't under control. Well, something is going to happen to me that I don't know what it's going to be. Up go gentle into that cold night. Old age shall burn and rave at close of day. Rage, rage against the dying of the light. No wise men at their end, no dark is right. Because their words had fought no lightning they could not go. Good men the last way by, crying how bright their frail deeds might have danced in a green bay rage. Rage against the dying of the light. Wild men who caught and sang the sun in fight and learned too late they grieved it on its way. Do not go gentle into that. So, I will, I think as of this video actually being posted, I'll have run the marathon that this is the first, uh, first recording that I'm doing <clears throat> as a part of what I thought would be a series to kind of like log and journal the, uh, the whole road to that experience. I've already done it once already, but I ended up having a, a barely passable time. It was something like where the cutoff is five hours. I think I got like four hours and 52 minutes and I misjudged the time. I thought it was 40 kilometers. It's actually 42. So I think I'll be better equipped. And I think it's, it's kind of cool to note your progress along the way with these kind of things and why, why we do them. And I kind of had the thought tonight about why I do it. And I thought that would be an interesting place to, to start this whole reflection is that um, I, try, I try to live uh, a balanced life, I would say, and I think that that's because I'm an extremely unbalanced person. <laughs> uh, it's that kind of thing, you know, the person who is constantly seeking peace doesn't have any. Um, and. I think that that's a good thing to understand. I think to understand why we do things is important. And I'm kind of curious to find in the course of training for this, not only the goal that I've set for it where I want to increase my time, but kind of the things that I observe in myself along the way, because I know that for all my habits, it's not the easiest thing where I'm, I'm good at like stints of extreme discipline and then I go absolutely nuts with excess. That's sort of like the cycle of my life and I'm wondering uh, how long I can maintain that for and what it'll feel like. Um, my life is certainly not boring for that reason which I really really enjoy and so that's kind of the start of this, this reflection of I'm a man constantly in imbalance and that's why I'm always seeking to be balanced but I think in the way that I try to show an honest perspective on my channel that can lead to of course it naturally leads to like with all social media uh, this impression of a a perfectly balanced life because this side of yourself that you show people is always in balance and I'd worry I know that you can have a, a negative impact on people no matter what what you do in your life but I would I'd like to minimize that as much as possible and I think it's through genuine acts like this that you you do something better for people than obfuscating the truth and making it appear more perfect than you actually are. Okay, it is the 27th, 7 o'clock in the morning and it is race day <laughs> so let's see if all the uh, the training was enough it's gonna be a hell of a monstrous experience regardless but now after today boxes are defeated purpose always fleeting I poise questions to the ceiling like an answer gonna come through this too revealing life is easy at concealing all emotions to the I don't know exactly how this will be because of this but when I did it the first time it was like a typhoon <laughs> And today, it looks like it's an even 20 degrees the entire day. Fingers crossed. By virtue of the number of people that do this, it's kind of a wild experience because there's like 10,000 that register for it. 
So yeah, you better believe that's like one intense experience to be lined up at the beginning. If I got right down the line, I'd have a few regrets. Just spent more time on biking instead of smoking cigarettes. We should work more on music instead of alternating steps. Probably should have talked more to people. Last run I did was 18K and I did it under two hours. It felt good. There was no like severe moments like I felt like I was totally broken down. And admittedly, that's less than half the distance I'll have to do today, but I wasn't even feeling that good the last time I did this, so. Moment, not the past. See the present unwrapped, because the moment's all we have, till it's gone. I'm just waiting, hoping the next one go last. I've said it before, I said it a million times doing this, like, maybe the most impressive thing is just the support that you get all 42 kilometers along the way. You have people cheering you on. It's an incredibly special feeling. So this is the main field where you can store all your stuff. And it is packed currently. Time is now 8.03. You can basically start setting up in your blocks. There's four of them, A, B, C, D. From 8.10 to 8.50, your race starts at Race starts at 9 o'clock. Here it is. All the madness. Let's see if I can make it through one more time without dying. Third, feel pretty good. Tighten one leg, but way less breaks than the last time I did it. So, going well. So what about, what is it now, 17K? There's a lady in front of me here, running in a kimono and sandal. She's led me the whole way. <laughs> Over 22 kilometers now, means I'm over halfway. It feels like it. <laughs> it feels absolutely horrendous, but again, comparing it to last time, I've been way more strategic, and I've had like way less breaks. Hard to tell overall uh, how it figures in the whole thing, but I think if I can keep this up now, I should be able to beat my time just kilometer by kilometer now. I feel like this is when the real race begins, once you pass and you're still alive after that 20K. Just past, just past the 30 kilometer mark. And I gotta admit, it feels very hopeless. <laughs> oh, such a head game. I feel like I've slowed down more than I did the last time I did it, but I can't be sure of my time. Of course you can't give up, and it's uh, it's only 12 kilometers left, so we'll see how it goes, but this is really fueled by willpower because the legs are seized. I can honestly say that this is one of the most disappointing things I've ever experienced in my entire life. I couldn't finish. My legs seized up at about around 32 kilometers where I could tell I was having to stop and stretch too much and that added, yeah, more time, more time and then I could tell just at the end that I wasn't going to be able to finish before the cutoff. I was not going to be able to improve on my time previous. So that's, like I said, most disappointing because it's in contrast to a, a greater success I had at whatever other point. The only thing, I don't have a lot of pretty words for it either. I'm not like, oh, this is inspirational. Not really, <laughs> it just sucks. 
I think most important to the only thing I think of this is accept. I'm like, so you sucked. So it's really disappointing. If you want, because I know what I did wrong, I know why I got this result. Uh, the things that I could have improved that led to this. To change those, and it's that simple. It can be uh, can be void of uh, any sort of strong emotional reaction. So I know what to do next year. I will finish, and I will improve on my time, and I won't leave anything to chance because. Yeah, aside from one or two things, I think this could have been a, it could have been a great year. I started strong, but there was a severe drop off like I never experienced before. It was interesting to train for, uh, and I learned a lot. Actually, I mean, I learned a ton. You can often have these things that you learn so much in your failure. That it's useful. I think that's as pretty as the words get here. So that's the uh, the end of the marathon for this year. I'll be back next year. Just where it was needed